Welcome to 52 Miniatures. I'm Alex. What if a lone space marine uh, got sort of dimension warped um, into Middle Earth and obviously went to work for Sauron because, you know, they would have uh, the most sort of common hobbies and interests. And it turned out that this space marine was actually kind of more efficient than them uh, ring wraith fellows, you know, with the blaster and the power armor. So he, he, he actually managed to find uh, the Hobbit uh, before uh, Gandalf did. And, um, you know, what happened then? That's the diorama I'll be making today. Our dimensionally displaced space marine. I'd like him to look like he really does work for Sauron. Seeing as Sauron's favorite color is black, that's where we're going. A black armor that's been to Mordor and back. Black can be a little tricky to paint. I've got a video talking about why that is if you want to dive deeper. It's linked in the upper right hand corner. But here's a trick to creating a simple tabletop blackened, beaten up armor using oil paint. I start out with a light grey rattle can base coat that once dry I cover in black oil paint mixed with white spirit. About three parts white spirit to one part oil paint. After I've let the oil paint sit for about 20 minutes I carefully wipe the edges of the mini using a cotton bud moistened in white spirit. This is a sort of edge highlighting by erasing black off the highlights. This is a simple way of painting a scheme that has a lot of the same colour on it and can of course be varied. A dark grey base coat, for example, would create more subtle highlights. Stretch our imaginations further and there could be a dark blue oil paint on a bright blue base coat. And so on. I'm using this speedy tabletop standard black as a place to start. I really like that. Having a mood already in place that I can work on. A sketch, if you may. After the oil paint has dried, something that can take a day or two. I varnish the miniature and move on to painting with regular acrylic paints. A very dark grey, quite thinned down to add some more sort of dusty charcoal vibes to the areas that would be facing the sun. This is not someone who spends time polishing armour, busy hunting hobbits. Mixing in a light grey, I add a little more depth to the dirt-like highlights and then move on to pure light grey to refine edge highlights and add some proper scratches and staining. Some of these scratches, yes, there is a lot of them, I just never know when to stop, um, I do even brighter, adding a little white to the light grey. This is pretty bright for a blackened armour, but I imagine there is some tainted steel underneath. And besides, at an arm's length, this just reads very nice on a tabletop. Trying to stay in a medieval style realm, my Middle Earth is kind of dark, I think, and leather was always a big thing in dark medieval times. So this space marine will sport some leather details. And of course, a red evil glow from inside. This is a typical bad guy thing. See a pair of red glowing eyes and you know it's time to call a cab or a giant eagle fast. I usually paint glowy things by starting with the darkest light tint, working my way closer to the center of light using brighter and more saturated paints. Sometimes the absolute brightest spot needs to be painted with an almost white that I then can color tint with a watered down paint. By the way, if you've come this far and your thoughts are, what is a space marine and who is this Sauron fellow? First off, I'm sorry, let me enlighten. Space Marines are altered human beings some 30 to 40,000 years into a made-up future. As future space soldiers, their job description includes genocide and dying for their ruler. Sauron is an evil sorcerer from a made-up past. He too enjoys genocide. His symbol is that of an ever-seeing eye of flame, a lot like a fellow called Horus. Uh, he's uh, with the Space Marines in the future. Sauron actually has orcs and not space marines, although uh, n now he does. Uh, I think I can hear the sound of this week's sponsor.
jailed to your lord. You're no lord. Um, <laughs> I finally found it. The sword in the stone. <laughs> now I'm a lord. <laughs> no, you're not. And rice a knife. Uh, <coughs> knight, uh, am I not a lord? No. Here you go, Oscar. Uh, am I a lord now? Yes, you are. Established titles is a fun way to preserve the natural woodlands of Scotland. It's a project based on a historic Scottish custom where a landowner is referred to as a laird, a lord or a lady. And so by buying something as little as a square foot of dedicated land entitles you to be called a lord or a lady. And that's what a title pack from established titles will give you, a square foot of land on the Edelston estate in Scotland. Your certificate, like this one, which is Oscars, gives you a specific plot number that you can, you know, you can actually visit your square foot of land if you so wish. Now this makes a lovely gift. Um, I actually uh, gave one to my son. I don't think, you know, he might appreciate being called a lord right now. He's seven. Well, he might, but a fun thing when he gets a bit older. Uh, and you're actually entitled to, you know, if you check into a hotel, then you can, you know, you can choose Mr. or Mrs. or you're now entitled if you get one of these, to be called a lord. Which is pretty cool. Established titles work with global charities and for every order, a tree is planted to help with reforestation across the globe. Established titles are running a sale at the moment, but if you use 52 miniatures as a code during checkout, you get additional 10% off. The first 200 people that purchase a title pack um, using my link will actually end up next to Oscar, which is... It could be good or bad, depending on his mood. Please do go check out the links in the description. And if you bump into Oscar up there on the moors of Scotland, just, you know, make sure you bring your own sword. Okay. I did want some kind of crude Eye of Sauron on the Space Marine. I'm terrible at freehand painting, something that works in my favor when doing crude Mordor war paint style iconography. And finally, some rust. I sponged the heavy-duty stains on. This technique leaves a great semi-random chipped-like distribution of the rust-colored paint. I can then go in with a brush using black and consequently light gray paint to give some depth and life to all the rust stains and chipping. This is something one can spend ages on, I guess. My course of action is very random, going for the most effective visual impact. I don't highlight or shade every single rust stain or scratch mark, just the ones that bother me. I also try and see a lot of the damage as ways to highlight the armor. It probably looks like I've done a lot of detailed work on this miniature, but it's all quite random and relatively sloppy. But the combination of all the steps makes it look like I kind of know what I'm doing. For the final step that binds everything together, but also changes everything a little further away from black, a little light rust colored oil paint, diluted with white spirit to create a wash. This time the dilution is probably about six or seven parts white spirit to one part oil paint. I just want this to act almost like a filter, slightly tinting the blackened armor in places. And after a matte varnish, this space marine is done. And so, for our crime scene. I found a piece of a set design in miniature form on my thingiverse, very reminiscent of uh, Bilbo Baggins' home from Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings films. I printed out using the Space Marine for scale and then set forth to build a little diorama. No major research was done here. I know Bilbo lives in a hill on a hill. There's lots of greenery, shrubberies, flowers, picturesque cottage vibes and all that. 
The scale was a real challenge. Everything is just so tiny, but at the same time, how tiny should things be? Does a hobbit grow a hobbit-sized pumpkin? Are the flowers grown by hobbits smaller than flowers grown by humans? Again, if you're here, admittedly still confused since my explanation on space marines and Sauron, let me continue. A hobbit is a race of little folk, very little. Apart from the feet, their feet are large and hairy. It's like Chewbacca left a little DNA behind, but only enough for the feet. Hobbits like good things in life, like food, smoking pipes and staying away from adventure. This hobbit, who lives in the lovely home on this hillside, did not manage to stay away from adventure. Whilst on adventure, he stole a precious ring, or found it, depending on who you ask. It's Sauron's ring and he wants it back, and that's why Sauron sent the Space Marine to retrieve it. And so, regarding the scale of things, I printed out a lot of details for the hill and the garden, at about 50 to 70% of their intended size, and yet, compared to the hobbit's house, they look large. Unfortunately, printing them out smaller and they become very difficult to handle without breaking. I also printed out a hobbit. Well, well it's a corpse. But alas, Sauron wanted the ring real bad, and space marines are in fact not known for their embroidery skills rather the happy trigger fingers. This is a regular human corpse that I have scaled down to a hobbit size. Also, you would by now be noticing the hole not only in the hobbit, but in the door and on the building itself. These blaster or bullet or bolt holes were made with the 3D printer software. There's a hole making tool to make holes for resin drainage and I just used it for more sinister purposes. I also printed a set of hobbit's feet, a simple enough conversion to turn this mini-human into a regular dead hobbit. Painting the diorama was fun. I decided to use my Golden Soul Flat Artist acrylic paints only. A chance to learn a bit more about mixing and blending paints. The Golden Soul Flat paints are very high quality and most are, like artist paints, tend to be single pigment. This means there's not a ton of different mixes of colors. There's no skin tone, for example. Instead, one has to mix different paints to create the tones one is after. My plan was to first block out the base colors. The entire diorama had been Zenithod primed to start. A white dust spray of a black primer. And so I did try to do some slight wet blending using the Zenithod primer as a guide to as where things should be a little brighter or darker. After the major color blocks were done, I mixed up some shadow colors in my wet palette. Paints I want to use where there should be shadows. I dilute them immensely and then I start applying shadows. First adding a little paint, then rinsing off my brush in water to then diffuse the edges of the paint I added and I can create gradients. This is not like adding a wash, instead it stains the entire surface. I use black for the deepest shadows, but also blue and brown and red for not as severe shading. This technique gives a watercolor look to the whole thing that I appreciate. After this, I go in and start highlighting and adding details. Such a smaller piece, such a small scale really requires exaggerated contrast, deeper shadows and brighter highlights. I sensed a big difference even from the Space Marine. Some of these small details really need to pack a punch to not just look bland. My biggest issues was the flowers. I realized, have I ever painted flowers? Miniature flowers? I don't think so. Not very often, at least. I've painted more guns than flowers, which is maybe a little sad. The roses went well, but the other ones didn't. Either too colorful or not too colorful or too bland or too interesting. They should be statements of the picturesque setting, but at the same time not steal the show. The Hobbit was a real eye-squinting paint job. I kind of went on feel rather than sight. I've never felt a need for any enlarging eyepiece, but I could have used one here. Thus, I didn't film much of the painting, too busy squinting. The flesh is a little pale, but that's the point. It's a dead Hobbit, after all. I'm not big on gore, really, but if there ever was a time for it, it would be now. It's like sacrificial gore, this. The murdered hobbit. Well, I'm not actually sure if it's quite dead yet. I mean, hobbits are tough and I've got no idea where their hearts are placed uh, anatomically. 
he might be just trying to rise a little to get up one last time. Poor little hobbit, maybe you should just have left the ring where you found it. On the other hand, it'll be exciting to see what happens when Gandalf shows up. I had a lot of fun building this little diorama. It was a bit more work than I intended. The build and the paint job of the Hobbit hill especially. The Space Marine on the other hand was a very swift experience and I can warmly recommend the oil paint technique to play around with, especially for many a tabletop miniatures. If you're still here, I know this might have been confusing, but that is all about to end. And even if you don't still know anything about Space Marines and Hobbits, I hope you've enjoyed watching me paint. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this one. I sure did. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps out with the channel and spread the word. Also, if you, you know, really want to get serious with the, with the support, uh, please go check out the Patreon. Bye. Thank you.